Hey everyone, um, corduroy enduro time, uh, my first one ever, 2021, um, looking forward to it, just showed up uh, this morning uh, at the staging area and where the start finish line is going to be, uh, we were here last night, dropped some stuff off and then we headed over to uh, the Airbnb we had booked, Big Iron Moto hooked us up, so that's where we're staying. Um, yeah, this is going to be interesting. A lot of water. Uh, they've taken out uh, quite a few river crossings. They've changed up some of the course at the last minute because of the amount of water that's come in in the area in the last few days. Um, and that's, uh, that's going to have a huge impact on uh, everything, I think. So I'm here nice and early. The gates don't open until 7, uh, although it looks like they're going to start pushing us through right now. Going to get the bike warmed up, um, get my gear warmed up in my trailer. Uh, in the fall, it's cold, and I, that's a big takeaway. You know, if you're camping out, um, I don't, I don't envy the guys and girls who are in a tent, waking up in the morning, uh, putting gold, cold gear on. So, you know, find a way to keep yourself warm in the morning so that you're not hitting the start line uh, already chilled inside your gear. So we're gonna head in here, get some stuff ready, and uh, we'll kick this off. their property and I'd also like to mention um, that during the year if you come riding up here I've given all the tracks to OT OFTR that are on Crown land if you do not stay on those tracks and you follow a trail that you rode in the corduroy you're riding on private property we almost lost one of our trails this year landowner with some convincing we had to build a bridge that he could get his Jeep across he's letting us use his property still so if you come up riding here and you aren't following what OFTR says you can because they have all the crown trails on their mapping, then you're going to cause a problem for our event. So.
Hey everyone. Hey, uh, thanks for watching my video. Uh, if you've stuck with it for this long, um, you've seen a little bit of drone footage uh, and you've seen a little bit of trail footage um, from the 2021 uh, Corduroy Enduro. So my first time ever racing in the Corduroy Enduro um, and it was great. Um, I really appreciate uh, all the support for those of you who are watching my videos and following my Instagram uh, or my Facebook page. Uh, hopefully you can see the effort that I'm putting in uh, in trying to um, you know, elevate the quality uh, of my social media and my YouTube videos. So the Corduroy Enduro, um, I raced in the novice class. I'm going to avoid making comparisons to things like uh, Battle of the Prospectors um, or, or other races uh, that I've done this year because I think they're very different. Uh, the Corduroy Enduro was uh, my first time uh, in a race that had test sections that were timed with transit sections in between. Um, it's my first time racing where you know the start line uh, for whatever amount of time until the finish line. It wasn't all race pace, wasn't all racing. Battle of the Prospectors was the same thing. Once you left the start, you were racing. Um, there was no transit sections. You were on the clock the whole time. So the Corduroy Enduro was a little bit different and I really, really liked the format. Um, I really liked uh, being able to rest on transits. I really liked being able to get a drink of water, uh, eat a little bit, get a snack in, uh, chat with other riders, hang out a little bit, and wait for your minute to come up um, and hit your time section. So, you know, a couple of things on day one, uh, for some of the footage you're going to see is, uh, you know, I was able to get some footage of Bernie's. I was able to get some footage of uh, Somerville Forest. Somerville Forest was really, really fast, really flowy. Um, you know, it was uh, it was really nice. Bernie's, you know, was a, a little bit uh, a little bit technical. My type of riding, single track, um, some fast parts, but some technical parts as well. I really enjoyed that. Somerville, like I said, single track, but really, really fast. Um, Morgan Somerville, you're going to see in the video. Uh, was a little bit different. There was a big pile up. Uh, we found a way to get around. Um, I didn't necessarily make up any time uh, by going around, but I didn't lose as much time as some people did uh, by getting stuck in uh, in the mud fest that uh, that was Morgan Somerville. Um, and then of course Sedgwick's at the end of day one. Uh, Wheelers, uh, no sorry. Uh, yeah, and then Wheeler Scott and Sue's, um, which I which I didn't get uh, footage of because you guys all know how GoPros work. Um, interesting though, in the future, I think for the Corduroy Enduro, there's no excuse not to get footage of everything because you have those transit sections, and typically, almost every time I would arrive at uh, at a start line for a test early, and I could have had time to swap batteries, but I would have had spare batteries on me. Um, the Sunday. Uh, route was, was quite a bit different. Um, Sunday, the trails got much more technical, much more difficult, um, even for novice, and that's the class that I raced in this year, and, and that's another reason why I'll avoid comparing it to things like Battle of the Prospectors. Battle of the Prospectors, I uh, was in intermediate so that I could race all of the hardest terrain that they had to offer. For the Corduroy Enduro, um, I raced in the novice class. One of the big takeaways I would say for riders is um, it can be a bit more enjoyable if you don't upclass yourself too too much. So yeah, everybody likes a good uh, a good test. Everybody likes to test themselves. Dirt bikers are an interesting breed. Um, at least the ones that that I've met, we like to punish ourselves a little bit, which is all good and and it's and it's great. But, but when it comes to when it comes to racing and when it comes to enduro specifically, I really do think um, that it's okay to have a piece of humble pie every once in a while um, and race in a class that befits your skill. I can ride um, and survive on just about any trail I've been on all year with various class of riders, but that's not the point. 
um, being able to truly enjoy the event, um, enjoy the trails, uh, be competitive, all of that I think is, uh, is just as important. So for me, um, I was happy to be a novice this year. I am going to class up next year, uh, but for novice this year it was fine. Um, on day two, we got to do a uh, butt test. Uh, that was my favorite test out of all of them. Uh, not only because of, you know, the fun little, um, call it an enduro oh, cross no. for lack of a better term at the beginning, but because I really enjoyed the woods. There was a lot of people who didn't enjoy the woods portion of the butt test. I really enjoyed it. Um, and then Greens Mountain, um, probably my biggest mistake was uh, that I that I had over the two days of racing was at Greens Mountain. So as far as results go, I was third uh, on the first day on Saturday going into uh, Sunday. Following Sunday, I ended up fifth overall, which I'm extremely happy with because on Greens Mountain, I ended up taking a wrong turn. I don't know how, uh, but I took a wrong turn and ended up doing um, some of the pro section um, of the single track, which included a pretty gnarly vertical wall at the very end just before um, the finish line. Then you had to launch your bike up, which uh, uh, I did successfully and uh, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, but I definitely added anywhere between 12 and 13 minutes onto my overall time. And in novice, the top 10 guys were uh, way too close to make that type of a penalty. So, you know, if I wouldn't have done that and I would have finished uh, the Greens Mountain single track and done the, the novice uh, test, um, it is very likely I would have podiumed if not uh, been in, you know, in the run for uh, first place. Um, but second or third for sure. So I'm pretty happy with my first corduroy. Um, I look forward to it. I'm going to do more, obviously. And next year I'm going to up class and see if I can't uh, do more of the trails. So it's day two of the corduroy. Um, yesterday went really well. Uh, currently, I am sitting third out of 70 riders in my class. So um, anyway, try not to get inside my own head today. Ride my ride and uh, and see what happens. But um, great trails. Uh, yesterday was uh, an awesome day. Um, and I'm really looking forward to today. So hopefully I'll get some good footage of some of the tests today. Um, butts test I'm really excited about I heard it's pretty fun uh, just something different so I'm really looking forward to it um, so keep following along yeah oh my lord watch me sway darkness falls and we all pray hoping for the light of day down to the river I have held the devil's hand felt the weight of my own sin burdened by the heart of man down to the river down to the river Taught me how to live, Daddy taught me how to give. Both 
prove them had their own sins Down to the river Every man has felt the shame All our blood, it runs the same Father, hear us as we pray lessons I learned from the corduroy. Uh, number one, for racing in general, tire selection is super important. Um, you know, the, there's a trend to go to fatty, gummy, big tires um, all over the place. That has not worked for me whatsoever. Um, I put a regular MX uh, you know, 8100 21 series tire on the front, a mid-terrain. I ran a 525 uh, cheater tire on the back and a 120 series. Um, the whole year I've been running um, a gummy fatty up front as well as an IRC M5B Evo in a 140 series in the rear. Um, going to this setup for the corduroy, I went to a 120 in the rear and like I said a regular uh, kind of Moto MX profile in the front. Moose's front and back for the corduroy enduro, which is my first time ever running Moose's front and back, and I am absolutely in love with this setup. Uh, turning control okay. for high speed, everything was much better, and so for next year for any of the XC races, 100%, uh, I'll go with a 110 or a 120 series in the rear, and um, my front tire is always going to be now an MX regular um, kind of tall profile tire that can really dig in um, and turn like a scalpel. So that was really important and uh, the corduroy I think from a tire perspective was uh, in a grip and control perspective was my best race all year. Um, I was really really happy uh, with the setup and that will be the setup I use from now on. Um, zip ties are your friend. Keep a lot of them. Um, and even if you've never ever in your life experienced uh, bolts coming loose or brakes fading or grips on your handlebars moving around um, or braking levers or your levers moving around on you or hand guards uh, being punished and ripped off and um, angled upwards or downwards um, you know, gear levers falling off or brake levers falling off uh, subframe bolts coming loose and falling out even if that has never been an issue for you in the past 
when you are getting ready for the corduroy enduro, go around and check everything. Put blue Loctite on everything, torque everything to spec, check everything. Put glue on your grips, um, put zip ties you know, on your handlebars, attach them wherever you can, bring lots of them with you, uh, because you're gonna need them. I have never had an issue with my bike as far as uh, durability was concerned. The corduroy is a different animal. I don't know what it does. I don't know if it was the water. I don't know if it's the sheer amount of hours you put on your bike in two days. I had subframe bolts fall out. I had bolts holding my levers fall out. I've had my grip move. And that's on top of everything that I saw everybody else go through. Watered out bikes, destroyed air filters, um, and you name it, it happened. So for the corduroy enduro, make sure your prep is on point. Uh, make sure you have spares. Buy bolt kits, bring them with you. Have extra air filters. Uh, make sure your tires are good to go. Have brand new brake pads front and rear on your bike. Don't start the corduroy enduro with brake pads that have already been used. Uh, because I had fairly new brake pads on mine and they're down to the metal after those two days. So, you know, be smart about it, make it enjoyable. If it's your first one, um, you know, do the prep, make sure you're ready. Um, and you can't do too much to your bike before the corduroy. Um, it'll, it'll pay dividends, it'll make your time there much more enjoyable. You only get 15 minutes to work on your bike between Saturday and Sunday, and it's not enough time. By the time you go through the check, by the time you drive back to your trailer, by the time you fueled up, maybe change an air filter, if you don't want to be penalized, you're getting your bike back to the impound and then you're not seeing it. So I'll show you some video footage of the impound. It's going to be in here as well. Uh, I've probably talked long enough that maybe I'm starting to overlap with it now. Um, but those are just some of the things uh, that I noticed when it came to the corduroy enduro. Um, if you've never done it before, uh, be prepared to have a lot of fun. Um, you can camp out there. Uh, but the one thing I would say is I did hear that in some years uh, past it's been really hot. But just understand that in the fall time frame, the temperature, everything can change, weather can change. It was super wet, something like 100 millimeters of rain came down. Um, you know, it changed the whole nature of the race. They had to close down sections at the last minute. It is what it is. But it was, uh, you know, it was pretty chilly in the mornings. Uh, it was chilly on the transit sections in between the tests and then you warmed up uh, during the tests. But, you know, if you're gonna sleep and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna camp out there, um, you know, have extra gear, have dry jerseys, have dry pants. Um, if you don't have two set of boots, have a way to dry your boots out. If you don't have two helmets, have a way to dry your helmet out. Have a way to dry gloves out. Have a way to get mud off of uh, gloves and pants if you don't have a change, because there's nothing worse than trying to sit on your seat. Um, or hold your hold your grips the next day um, when everything's caked in mud. So you know spare goggles uh, or at least tear offs with the way to wipe them off on the trail. Um, you know high vis uh, glasses like the yellow lens glasses or, or what have you um, could also be useful. Uh, but just make sure make sure you're prepared. Um, it'll make the corduroy enduro. Uh, much more enjoyable. So thanks for watching. Uh, keep watching. It's a long video. It's probably about 30 minutes. Uh, I've tried to shake it up a little bit here and there to get away just from the POV uh, footage. Uh, but it is what it is. It's the cord. Uh, it's a memory for me. For those of you who are sticking around for the whole video, thank you very much. Um, and again, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Um, you know, again, I just do this for the fun of it, but when you put as much effort into the videos as I do, um, your reward is how many people subscribe to your channel uh, and how many people view it. Um, not necessarily that you're making any money, because trust me, I am not. Uh, I am hemorrhaging money at the moment uh, with this hobby. So thanks again. Appreciate your support. Um, and uh, hopefully there's more riding this season before the winter hits. Um, it was a great season so far. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any more races in my future for this summer, um, but definitely next year. Uh, very focused, um, you know, very deliberate approach to racing next year. So um, thank you very much.